hey everyone, um, I got a new haircut, so that's cool, but my hair is not behaving today, so it's probably going to get in my eyes a load. Um, I also got a septum piercing, which is this bit here, but at the moment I'm wearing a retainer, which means it like is flipped back into my nose whilst it heals, so you, I won't be able to show it to anyone for a month, which sucks. But I finally got it done after years of contemplating it and also pissing out, but now I finally got it done, so that's cool. I also received these pants that I got. They're really cool, but everybody thinks I'm really weird for getting them, and like, yeah, they are uterus pants, but I thought the design was pretty cool, but everyone I showed has been like, it's kind of weird, why did you get that? But, oh well, I like them, it's cool, whatever. Um, I've been meaning to make this video for a while, um, and it's for parents. Why did I mention uterus pants on a video for parents? Oh well, um, <laughs> I'm going to make this video for parents because um, a lot of parents aren't sure how to handle their children having an eating disorder. So um, basically you can discuss the things that I think are good to do or not to do when you are looking after a child that has um, an eating disorder and is in recovery for this eating disorder. Um, I've written a lot of things down because there was lots of stuff. Um, firstly, you can't trust the eating disorder. Um, and it doesn't mean that you can't trust your child, but whilst they're in recovery, the eating disorder will try and lie to you. Um, it will try to make the child engage in behaviours and um, lie to you about what they've eaten and you have to just realise that the eating disorder will try and um, get between both of you. Um, both of you meaning the, the child and the parent. Um, now, obviously, you want to be able to trust your child to recover, but if they're a minor and they're in recovery because um, they were kind of hospitalised and forced into recovery or um, you convinced them into recovery, which is great, but um, if they haven't made the decision solely by themselves then they might not be completely resigned to actually recovering and the eating disorder will try and get in the way of that recovery. Um, so it's a good idea if they're a minor to monitor their eating, make sure that they are reaching the minimums um, and make sure they're not hiding their food in their room or purging afterwards. Um, I think that it's quite standard procedure that they have to stay downstairs with a parent or, or someone else um, for half an hour um, because that's when the food starts digesting and purging won't actually you know, get the food back up again. So after eating and after meals, it's a good idea for them to stay downstairs with you or, or someone else um, so that they don't try and actually get rid of that food that they've eaten. Um, yeah, so just, just keep a very, very watchful eye on their eating habits because the eating disorder will try and fool you. Don't let it fool you. Don't trust the eating disorder. Um, Stress that you're there for your daughter or son, but that you will challenge the eating disorder. And obviously, like, you will hear the eating disorder coming out in the things that they say. Um, sometimes it will be your child talking, sometimes it will be your eating disorder, uh, your eating disorder, uh, their eating disorder talking. So just make sure you can distinguish between the two. Um, but obviously, you've definitely got to make them aware that you are there for them and that you are doing this for them, but that you will not do what the eating disorder wants. Uh, a book that I'd really, really recommend that you read is Brave Girl Eating. I'd recommend anyone to read it. It's, it's an amazing read and um, I read it and then I've passed it on to my parents now. Um, it's written from the perspective of a mother with a daughter with anorexia and although I can't entirely relate because my recovery was always done by myself. I wasn't monitored. My parents weren't really a big part of my recovery um they always 
left me to my own devices and, and were there when I needed them. Now, that worked with me, but I'm I'm not really um, the poster child for recovery because I, I was able to do that by myself. A lot of people are not able to do that themselves, especially when they are minors. Um, I don't think, that, I think there are a lot of children that cannot do it without a bit of forceful um, influence by their parents. Um, luckily, I was kind of able to do it more by myself. Um, in, but <laughs> to be honest, even though I did kind of get over the um, the very bad episode when I was younger by myself, I still wasn't fully recovered and I was still engaging in eating disorder behaviours for years and years and then relapsed really, really badly. So maybe it would have helped if my parents had forced me, although with the way I work, I don't really think that would have been the case. But I do think for a lot of people it is the case and they need that influence. Um, so yeah, read Brave Girl Eating. It's really awesome. It's really well written and the way that she describes the eating disorder that her daughter has is just fantastic. Um, Obviously, I said monitoring eating, reaching minimums. Obviously, that's not possible if they're an adult. Um, you can't make them eat eat stuff. You can't force them to eat stuff and tell them what to do if they're an adult, obviously. So that makes it a lot more difficult if your child is an adult. Um, don't talk about any food in a negative way. No good or bad foods. No healthy or unhealthy foods. Uh, don't mention calories. Um, calorie dense food is very very much encouraged in recovery obviously it's encouraged in any aspect of your life um, after recovery as well but um, when your child is recovering they're going to need to eat calorie dense food to get that energy back into them um, but also most of their fear foods will be higher calorie foods so you need to be very positive about all kinds of food because otherwise it can put them off eating their fear foods and they need to get over that they need to be able to allow themselves to eat those foods um, so just don't talk about food in a negative way because it just makes that relationship um, that unhealthy relationship with food worse if you're encouraging it uh, don't ever be negative about anyone's weight this will be hard because we I mean we say stuff about other people's weight all the time. I mean, it's pretty horrific if you think about it, but it seems to be the societal norm um, to comment on other people's weight. Now, don't be negative about anyone else's weight. Don't even mention weight. It's not, it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant to how a person is and it's irrelevant to a person's health most of the time as well. So just don't comment on weight in general. Um, also try not to mention their weight gain um, instead say you look happier or you look healthier. Some people find the latter triggering sometimes, but I found it the biggest compliment when I was in recovery because when I had my, both my hairdresser and somebody who's not really a close friend, but still is a friend, come up to me and, and see me after some time um, when I got back from uni and he just said, oh, hi, Sarah, you're looking healthy. And at first I took that as a insult but then I realized that it was a massive compliment he wasn't hugely involved in my recovery he knew about it um, but to have that said to me by someone was actually like a massive compliment because it was saying that I look good it was saying I look healthy it means I'm glowing and I look attractive because I'm not looking unhealthy and looking unhealthy would be not good at all um, and also saying like you look happier or, health me, or healthier signals to me that I looked better, not bigger. Um, so the focus was on my more internal being happier, being healthier, um, rather than like on my weight. Um, encourage honesty and openness. That's gonna be a massive, massive, um, um, well, it's gonna be a massive good thing words going out of my head right now. Um, it's gonna be very good if you have an honest and open relationship with your child because they can then come to you um, if they're having problems or if they're doing well. Now, 
Remember that if she or he engages in eating disorder habits or lies or try to hide things like I mentioned at the beginning, then that is eating disorder, it's not your child. Do remember that. Um, but also stress that if he or she trips up and engages in eating disorder behaviours or whatever, um, just stress that you are there for them and that you're you're there to talk about it and help rather than being negative don't get angry or disappointed with them because the more negative you are in response to their slip-ups the less likely they're going to come and talk to you and it's going to be a, a really good thing if they can talk to you about their slip-ups because then they're trusting you to help um so don't be negative towards them if they do slip up um, I think it's a really good idea to view it as a possession. Um, it might sound strange, but when I read Brave Girl Eating, that's the way the mother described it, was if somebody had taken over their child's body and brain and was making her think and do things that she didn't want to do. And I think that's a, a good way to so you, that you can distinguish that this eating disorder is not your child. There is someone in there trying to make her do things um, that she doesn't want to do and also see things that she doesn't want to see. She's seeing, or he, sorry, um, your child will be seeing their body in a completely different way to the way you see it. They're not seeing it in a rational perspective um, and that isn't the child's fault. The eating disorder is making them do that um, and it really helped me to kind of think that the eating disorder is like something inside me, like a possession um, a demon inside me that has that is living inside my body and that it isn't actually me um, so yeah um, BMI is bullshit it doesn't mean your child is recovered if she or he hits a healthy BMI healthy is relative to the body um, don't just quit with the recovery process when she's hit healthy BMI because that doesn't mean that they are recovered. Um, your child is not going to be recovered at a minimal BMI. Um, they need to get to their weight set point, which is going to be probably a lot higher up, and the chances of relapse are much bigger if they stay down the bottom end of the BMI scale, if that's not their actual healthy weight, which it's very unlikely that it will be. So even if your child is weight restored, don't just think, oh, she's cured, it's fine, or he's cured, it's fine. Um, that's not gonna be the case. You're gonna have to still work for a long time before he or she is actually mentally recovered. And actually, they probably aren't physically recovered at that weight either. So do be very aware of that. Uh, hide the scales, I would say. Don't let them use the scales unless you're blind weighing them to see if they've made progress because they're going to get triggered by the scales um, and we don't want obsessive weighing which happens all the time. Um, now I, I saw that some people had recommended Feast um, which is f.e.a.s.t and it's a website that helps parents um, and there's some forums as well and I haven't really looked at the site much myself but I've heard that it is pretty supportive and helpful for parents so I would suggest you have a look at that um, and the last thing is look after yourself um, you can't look after somebody else if you don't look after yourself and don't don't feel bad if you get frustrated, if you get angry, if you get upset. Um, that's going to happen. Your child is suffering and you are going to be very angry at the thing that is causing that suffering, which is eating disorder. And that's very hard when it's actually part of, um, you know, when it's inside your child. Um, it's very hard not to get angry at your child as well because... You know, it, it's your child talking, it's your child's voice, it's your child's movements, it's your child's actions, um, but it isn't your child. Um, but don't, don't blame yourself if you do feel a lot of negative emotions surrounding this because it's very, very difficult for somebody who loves somebody else to watch that person go through something that it seems like they're inflicting on themselves. Obviously, um, they're not 
this isn't a purposeful thing. They don't really, I mean, they have a choice. They have a choice to recover, but it doesn't, it's not a very obvious choice when you are, you know, in the depths of an eating disorder. Um, but, you know, look after yourself. Make sure, um, you know, you're talk you have people to talk to. Go to, a, you know, a parent support group. Go on the forums online. Um, you know, talk, make sure you're talking to your partner. But that also might be quite upsetting. So, you know, maybe talk to your doctor. See if they can recommend anything for you. You may need to get some counselling yourself to help you. But the healthier you are, the healthier you are to help your child, the more you can help your child. So, um, and obviously it's important to look out after yourself for yourself as well. Um, so yeah, just make sure that you are okay as well. Um, well, obviously you're not really gonna be okay, but you know, as okay as you can be and that you are looking after yourself. Um, so yeah, that's all I've got at the moment. Obviously, if I think about anything else, I will write it in the description to add on or make another, a part two video if I think of a lot more things. But those are the most important things that I can think of right now that you can do to help your child. Um, I hope this video was helpful and I apologize for talking about pants and piercings at the beginning because I probably should have put that in another video, not aimed at parents. but yeah uh hopefully um i don't think many parents are gonna come across this themselves so if you have an eating disorder and you want your parents to watch this and obviously let them know um if it if you found if you think that they will find it helpful and and you find it helpful so yeah um i hope everybody parents and children alike are doing well keep it up